Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today's video I'm going to continue on with my little bird. So yesterday I laid down all the fabrics and I did some little open chain stitches through his plumes here and I put some little colonial knots around his cheek. Then I stopped the camera and I, as I said to you yesterday, I will probably pick up that, um, I would probably just hit play again and go for it, which I did. So for me, it's like three seconds after yesterday's video. And what I ended up doing is I had some of this blue thread left on my needle from the cheeks when I did the colonial knots. So I just looked up at this little cluster up here and I thought, what about using my leftover threads as laying down stitches on the little bird bits that we put around the place. So it's like a little homage to the bird. And I just stitch up here and down the bottom on the birdie fabrics, the leftover threads. I thought, well, that's genius if I do say so myself. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I had a little bit of blue thread left from those knots. So I'm just running it through the fabric up here. So that's what I'm up to. And I said yesterday's video, which is three minutes for me, that I wanted chocolate next to start laying in some chocolate cover colored threads into the little bird. So I'll do that as soon as I get rid of this blue into this up here. Okay, let's, this is really loose stitching for me. I'm really enjoying this. So there's the little bit of blue. I've got some of the gray and some bits sitting here. So I might use them up in those two areas up here and down here just to create a bit more detail. Let's have a look for chocolate. I've got one there that's new. It's not worth opening that. I think this will do the trick. I think the chocolate... I'm going to keep very matchy matchy because I think it will just add bulk to him instead of highlighting him is my theory. And I've got three strands here where I've been using two. I do have a paler brown here if we feel like we need to, you know, push back what I'm about to do, it might be very dark. But we will see. What do I do with my needle? There we go. So let's have a little play. We might start up around his head. And just pop a few in around the top of his beak. I'm sort of going to, I'll zoom in. I'm going to follow the artist in before me, the, the, the person that created this little bird. Because I don't want to lose the beauty of what they've done. So I'm going to use the chocolate to literally paint over, colouring him in. So if there's a dark little blob, there'll be a dark little blob. I'll stay away from his eye at the moment because I might need a different coloured chocolate. I'm all about the feathers, I think, with this. can always come in and lay more browns on top of it if I feel like we need a little bit of light reflecting through his plumage. 
but this is a good start. Let's get the maker's marks sorted. Okay, yep, that's going to work. I'm going to change direction a little bit so that we get that messy, spotty look through this area. even pop oh if I do a colonial knot it'll be huge because I've got three strands versus the two of the blue so I won't do that I'll just stay with what I'm doing don't want it to become super chunky I'm just stitching him in a little oh, I lost my grip so today's Monday for you guys, the start of another week. The year is flying. Absolutely flying. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, I like that. It's really defining him actually, these little chocolate stitches. I think that's what his tail feather will get. In yesterday's video, I was thinking about something to go down the center of his tail there. In my head, I had lace in mind. Actually, some of that would be good. Couched in there. Feather him up a little. Oh, I don't know. Just a few more stitches around the back of his neck coming to the front. It's a real lineal stitch now. I might then try and see how that brown stitch is sitting on a background colour there. I might see if I can match that colour and just do some random little stitches in amongst these chocolate chocolate ones not a lot because I don't I don't want to overpower it and it's tricky because that is a a washed looking color palette there I can see blues, I can see greys and creams. It's like they've laid down quite a lot of colours on his base. Then they've come over the top with this chocolate. So I just don't know. I might not have a colour that highlights. It might stand out like a sore thumb, but we'll see. So I'm just coming down his chest now with some more chocolate little stitches. I'm just going to work up there. I just want to catch his chest a little bit more with a couple little stitches. To make it a little look a bit feathery going up to the bottom of his beak where I was just before yeah I'm happy with that it feels like I've defined his underneath his neck a little bit there without overpowering it now I might end that off because I think that will be fine to paint him more so but I won't waste your time with that where's my little container that is a definite to have some more work put in on him now 
I wonder if I can match something to come in under his neck there just to give us that extra little detail. I'm going to go with this one, I think. Probably just two. This is just to pop a bit of light onto his body, like the sunshine is bouncing off of him, is my theory. Whether we achieve that's another thing, but at least we're going into the battle <laughs> with a plan. Made that a lot harder than it needed to be. Now, let's focus around his eye first because I think that would be a point of which light might bounce around. So I'm going to just do, I think, tiny little stitches in a different direction again, just working my way around that bottom edge of his eye. They're not showing up real well, but I am stitching into the blue that was there. So it's probably competing a little bit. So now I'm out of the blue and we'll see if we can get a few of them to highlight through. Oh yeah, that works. So I'm now just drifting down the back of his neck because I'm thinking the sun's coming from over his shoulder. So let's get a few little stitches back here. It's like sparkles on his feathers. Sometimes you need those little colours just to give your piece a bit of life. That's good. I'll come right down to his neck where he's wing feathers are starting just in there yeah now for consistency we could even come back and revisit his wings. Let's see if I do an open daisy stitch again, how that would look. So the bottom of the daisy stitch. Oh yeah. And then do a long tail on it. Just gives it that little bit of interest, another layer, so to speak, on his little feathers. So, put another one through here. It's giving him a bit of sparkle. That's very crooked. See the point on that stitch? Look at that. I don't know what I was thinking there. It's just added that little bit of light to his shoulder. Yeah, that's good. We won't put any down here because we're getting low on the bird. I don't think I can fit another one anywhere without falling off the actual plumes. So I might leave it at that. Now I might just sneak up here a little bit 
and maybe pop a few drifting down into my in amongst is that a word in amongst between these big chocolate stitches just a few we've got a bit of thread left so let's just use it up as they swish around the side of his neck and join this this spotty bit down the bottom here just a few might as well use the thread it's not jumping out as being an obnoxious addition so I can certainly feel confident that I can scatter a few little stitches down in amongst these big ones okay all right I feel like I could be a little braver around his cheek I might regret this but I'm thinking I could go even lighter like this guy and do some little stitches in there just below his cheeks and I might even actually here's an idea about some French knots Oh, not French knots, They're, they'll be too big. Some um, little colonial knots in amongst the blue. There you go. Spots. He needs more spots. Just bear with me, just knotting up my thread. Okay, come on, little guy. Let's get back. So what I'm thinking is I'll creep up to the side of where his mouth would open and we'll put in some more little colonial knots, just little ones, just to make that look a little bit more interesting under his eye. And I think it'll soften my blue a little. creates a little bit of interest on him. Hope you can see this okay and it's not focusing in and out too much, the blooming apple. I'm trying to adjust my hands and the thread and the needle out from the camera so that I'm not getting close to it. That's why they're disappearing a little bit out of screen. And I'm hoping then, so I'm like twisting down and then up to make that knot. But there's so many videos out there on, on stitches. So if you're unsure on how to do some of the stitches I mentioned and you can't quite make it out, just go to YouTube search and um, type in colonial knot. And you'll find someone that's doing a tutorial on it. I like that. It's become quite a nice little fluffy, fluffy looking detail under his eye. Like his feathers are raised a little bit there. I like it. I'll just drift a few of these little spots down into his chest. more detail the better now his eye I'm thinking I'm going to stitch probably I could do it in black thinking I might. I like to make often the eyes a black so that they stand out but I don't want to overpower his tiny itty bitty face because he's really is quite small so I have to be a little bit careful so I might just 
I might just use one thread and we can always build it up. I'd rather do less is more if it, that makes sense when it comes to faces and eyes. Probably not the boldest of persons when it comes to that. But I do want his eye to pop out a little bit from his face. So let's have a go. So let's do a little stitch in the center. Yep, so far so good. So I'm doing like a satin stitch. I'm just going to build it up ever so slowly. I know you're probably thinking she's not very brave, but I'd rather take my time. I need to take my glasses off, so I make sure I stay within the eye itself. Now the artist has got a tiny little bit of cream there to show the reflection of white. Now I'm now coming to the other side of the eye. If I lose that little bit of white, the glint in the eye, I might actually add it in. Let's see how we go. Just going to tiny little stitches. Oh gosh, I'm not even on camera. It's because I pulled it to myself. Now I'm going to actually, I still have the glint there. I'm going to now just work the corner with a little stitch. Just a little bit more detail to make the eye pop. That's like a little V. Then the artist has this tiny little marks coming away from the eye. I might stitch them too. I hope it's the right thing to do with this black. I think it is. Yep, they're tiny, which is good because we don't want the eye after I've been stitching there to pop out of his head to the point where it looks not natural. You've got to be a little bit careful with your stitches because you are adding bulk. We just want some little, little strokes of black. Here we go, just a little bit. I feel like I could do a little bit more around the top, but will that close it in? I think it will. I need to stop that. Do I do the beak? No, no. Gotta be careful with black. It can close your work in. I might just put a glint in his eye and I'm gonna use cotton that I use every day to stitch things down because it's nice and fine and I can at least put one stitch in and if I feel like I've got the space I can then do a second stitch because it's so tiny It's so tiny. There we go. That's it. Just one. That's all we need. You're probably thinking, gee, girl. No one will ever notice that. You watch. It'll be that one stitch that I, I'll see it and go, oh, gosh. How detailed did I get there? All right, now I just want to revisit around the top of his eye. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this pale one. Just feel like we could bounce a little bit of light up around. He's, the artist has put you can see it see there's a little V there and it helps shape 
shape the indent that would be there for his eye socket. And I think I want to stitch that to the point where it's quite noticeable because that's going to make him look a little dimensional around his eye, I think. Let's just put some little stitches in there and build that up. Because it's nearly like his eyebrow. Does that make sense? And the light, I think, would probably bounce off of that point because his eye is deeper into his shape of his head. We're really getting into the anatomy of this little guy. So I think we want to just emphasize that little ridge. Yeah, that's good. I don't know if you can see that, but we've just sort of given it a little concave feeling. Now I have some of this thread left. I might just come down here and do some really small colonial knots, like tiny. And that's going to soften that region there even more because it's like having three different sized beads. The blue is the big bead, even though it's still same as two threads as the one we just did. But because it's blue, it's really quite chunky looking. Then I did two threads again in the beige color, which looks softer than the blue. Now, if I come back with this beige again and just do single thread colonial knots, it will just soften it again. So, you know, he's, he hasn't got five big blue spots. He's got a cluster of little freckles. And I think that will work then. Feels a little bit more. And I know when you look at fabric, you'll often... If you take a moment to really stare at the images, flowers, birds, whatever it may be, you, you actually it's quite surprising at how many colours they lay in to get what they want. Gee, I hope that's all on camera. I do apologise. I can't see properly myself. And it's such fine work. So I do apologise if I'm all over the place. think that's got it. I feel like I've pushed those blue knots back. I think what wasn't helping, oh that knot disappeared behind the fabric, I think what wasn't helping too is there was blue painted onto the fabric and then I've used a brighter blue again and all I could see was those blue colonial knots but by adding some additional beige knots in different sizes has softened the whole area. It's really pretty. I'm happy with that now. Okay, so what are we gonna do to his tummy? We've got that golden, what have I done? Have I got a knot? Okay, let's just finish that off. Let's put my glasses back on so I can see. Now I want to explore some little feathers on his tummy. I, I've got a bit of chocolate work to do around his whole body, but that's okay. I won't waste your time with that. But I want to I want to explore this through here. So we need a golden. A golden color. This one. Four, three, six. Do two threads.
I was watching a video, I don't know who it was now, um, who was saying that she keeps all of her stranded cottons within the skein that they come and then just removes what she needs. And I don't know what I was stitching, but I had a new skein and I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And I started pulling out the thread and everything was going okay, but then I must have grabbed the wrong end and suddenly it was twisting and turning and by the time I got to the end of it, I had one hang of a mess. So I'm going to say that is not working for me. <laughs> I think I'm going to still... have my threads contained on little bobbins. I've just done a little daisy stitch in there, but a normal daisy stitch. I haven't had it open or so ends together, a simple little stitch. And I'm going to use that as my little feature around this section, I think. Get that plumage building up like little feathers. And I'm going to drift a few onto the bird to merge the layers. Like we've got that one piece that I added and then we've got the bird itself. So I might just bring a few stitches down into that zone so it sort of feels like it's connected. And I might take them right through to his tail. I'll come up here. Like so. Yeah, just a little detail for that bottom part of him. They'll come right through, I think. And just have a few poking out through this stone as well. A little 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 tail feathers starting to build now I wonder if I can do something then around here I feel like I may need to lay another color over it but we'll see And they're all sort of pointing in the direction of his tail. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Just a little detail underneath the wing. So that's, that's sort of on his body, but I did drift a few up here because that technically is his body as well. But I layered a piece of fabric in there to give his body a little bit of body. <laughs> I just feel like I need to go back up to the top of that area where I started. I feel like I need to bring a few more up. Oh, so that's another feather. Let's just... I might actually do some spots instead of... Because I've I just realised that that's actually a feather up there because I turned the fabric upside down so what I might do being that I'm in a new area is actually do some more colonial knots but space them out so there's like little spots coming through just a couple Another one up here. 
rounding out a thread. stitches probably just to break that up a little got a tiny little bit of thread left so I've got a few little spots a few little stitches just sort of mixing it up a little bit and I'm creeping up a little bit into his chest area so that his underbody feels like it's merging a little bit Just to soften that, I might get one more stitch and I'll have to end that. Then I think once I bring the chocolate down through that zone, I'll chocolate up his tail a little bit. So let's head to his tail next. How are we going for time? Plenty of time. I just want to have a look at that tail because... It's an unusual little thing they've done there. They've got these little lines coming across. So I want to explore that a little bit. And maybe I bring in something quite bright, brightish. This is a crochet cotton. There would be a bit of light potentially bouncing around the top of that tail. Put that back in there. So what we might do, if this is the right colour, is just do some little, little stitches through there, just to really bring them forward so I'd hate to think the chocolate that's coming through that zone you know this one is going to overpower those little white stripes I really like them I think that's a nice detail the artist has put in there so I want to just work my way down there Nice little, just a stroke of the thread. This is really painting, painting it in. That's quite a big area there, so I might need to do a couple. So the tail, let's talk tails. I wonder if I can find something that I could couch in there to make it look a bit different. There we go. So there's the honouring the artist's little dots and dashes and marks. Popping a little bit of light down his back tail. And then once the chocolate goes in there as well, that'll feel quite textured and raised. So that's, that's really good. I'm happy with that. Now, the tail. Do we... How do we texture up his tail. I'm just going to grab my lace because this piece here is what we used up here. Okay, I need to tidy up. I've got my thread box open here. I've got a hang of a mess. Let's get some space back. So, 
can we, this is like a cut off piece. See how there's lines in that? I think I'm going to attempt to couch this little line of, oh, it's come apart. It may not work. See what I mean? I just feel like I need something. Let's have a go. It could just disintegrate as I stitch it. Being that it's loose. Loose knots. Barely held together. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Is I might bring it right up to underneath that wing and just pop a few stitches in. I can always trim it back, some of the straggly bits, but I'm just going to work down the center of the, oh, I lost my thread. I'm holding my breath. I'm seriously holding my breath. I just feel he could have a little bit of bold texture in his tail. We can have a little extra play with that. That's it. Drift it down. Those stitches just to hold that core. Like he's got this baby fluff, you know, when the birds haven't quite got their feathers in position, the silky feathers, and there's these little random bits of fluff poking out from their feathers. That's what I feel like he needs down his tail. Oh, I saw the cutest thing the other day. I was sitting in the TV room stitching. And the window was open to the side of me. And I just, well, not open, you know, the blinds moved. It's too cold to have the window open. And out of the corner of my eye, I see movement. And I look over my shoulder and right next to me on the path outside that window, looking straight at me, is a magpie. And he had a mouth, his mouth, his beak was full of fluff that looked like was from Bandit. It was so adorable. And he's like looking at me going, what are you looking at? And I'm looking at him going, oh, you are so cute. It was just so beautiful. And he stood there for quite a bit with his whole beak full of this Australian shepherd black and white dog fluff. I said to my husband, just, just look over your shoulder now. Just don't move suddenly. And he was so cute. So spring is coming. The magpies are feathering their nest with bandit's fur. <laughs> it was so gorgeous. The problem we get here in Brisbane is as spring rolls in, the winds pick up a little bit around the end of August the Wesleys, and so many of their little nests end up on the ground. They do tend to build quickly again. You just hope the winds come early enough to allow them time or they haven't yet laid their eggs because it's such a, a rough time if their little eggs end up out as well. So now I'm going to just trim back those big straggly bits. Just to back that down a little bit. And it's just going to add that little bit of detail into him, into his tail. There we go. Just a little, little something. Could have probably continued on a little bit more there, but I might be able to put some stitches in there. Maybe I do that. How are we going for time? Gee, another hour gone. Gosh, guys, 
I would say I'll be back again tomorrow with more birdie stitches, but I'm getting close to having him finished. And then I can use all my little bits and pieces of sitting here and um, so I've got three threads on that that one. No, that one. So I'm going to now just do some, what would it look like if I did some pistol stitches? Would that look odd? No, let's do it. Just a couple, just to give him a little bit of a fancy tail. There we go. And then what I might do is, there he's got three pistol stitches at the end of his tail is I might come back up through all of that and just pop a few extra stitches just to drift that colour through the cream. Now it's so subtle, like no one's ever going to notice that, but I like it. It just feels like it's connected. That's good. Very good. Actually, I could do a pistol stitch down from that point too. Let's do that. Let's get some more little... That one didn't really do much. The distance of which the stitch went wasn't enough to denote there was actually... That's better. Oh, now we're getting carried away with pistol stitches. We're going off on a tangent now. Little bird is getting his very own feathery tail. <laughs> How the confidence has grown over the last few days. Gee, girl, give it a go. You never know. There we go. One more and then just put put it away, girl. I like that. That's given that tail a little bit more bulk. Okay. Lovely. Oh, hell of a mess. Jeez. Oh, that's not going to thread. There we go. Got it. Okay. There he is. He's got his fancy little tail. Once I get a little bit more chocolate through, which I haven't done yet, I think that'll really, really finish that off. So we've got five minutes left. Let's go back to laying down some of my scraps of threads. There they all are. There's a bit of everything there. So let's just pick up one, whatever it may be from our little bird stitch. I think tomorrow's video I will explore these flowers. I think little birds had enough attention. So yeah, I think I think that's what I'm going to do in the next video. So let's just camp for stitch these little scraps down with threads. So if you've ever considered doing yourself a camp for quilt using 
you know, bits and pieces of your favourite fabrics. You can, it's great to start it and get your colour palette and then just pick it up whenever you have bits left over from projects, especially if you're someone that stays within certain colours. So it becomes nearly somewhere to store your scraps. I've been considering it doing it myself because there's always bits left over from projects. Exactly this, little bird threads, little bird bits of fabric. And if you've got your base started, like I did with the background here, your piece becomes very interesting once you start stitching over it. I tell you who masters this is uh, Judy, mum to the girls. When you look at Judy's work, the detail in the layers is just beautiful. And it's like she just keeps layering upon layering upon layering. And if she picks up a piece of fabric that matches it, she layers it in. And it's that detail you I don't think you can really achieve in one, one go. And I think that's I think that's something that you could start a panel with some basics, the colours you like, your basic colour palette. And then just put it aside and layer in bits and pieces as they come along in your stitching journey. Whether that panel becomes a quilt, who knows? Don't put that pressure on yourself. Just have this morsel that builds of textiles. Here's my wise thought for the day. I really like Judy's work and I think it's it's quite free and I, I really like that. Okay. So if you're watching Judy, hello. <laughs> Congratulations on those two girls of yours. Let's just talk to Judy for a moment. Those girls that you have raised are fantastic. They are just lovely, lovely ladies. I hope they're not watching at the moment. So if you are, Rachel and Sarah, leave the room. Just want to talk to your mum for a moment. Good on your mum. You've done a wonderful job. They are lovely, lovely ladies. They are an absolute, absolute asset to all of us and their contribution to the industry in the general. It's oh, it's really good. So good work, Judy. Thank you. So let's salute the mums, the mums that have taught us to stitch, the grandmas that have taught us to stitch. If you have been lucky enough to have one that has influenced your journey of stitching, Let's just take a moment to salute them. And this, this little bit of stitching here has really made me think of her. So um, you can come back in the room, Sarah and Rachel. Sarah, can you get some more of Judy's work, please, and show us? The girl, we need to see the girl's work. Let's hope my message gets out there. <laughs> So I am slowly but surely just randomly stitching these little threads left from our little bird through the area up here. I'm not thinking too hard about it. We're just celebrating Stitch and Judy. We're celebrating our mums or grandmas that may have given us the, the kickstart into the industry of Stitch. And I love the fabrics. It's amazing how just a simple running stitch can achieve so much. Like, I know there's all these fancy stitches out there and they're lovely. But boy, there's something about just running stitch. I think if you're a beginner... Just delve into your running stitches. Don't 
don't overthink it just just do it because and I think because I've got a heap of little threads left over here it's really keeping me focused within it anyway I've got my color palette already oops so what's left I've got the really bright blue from his cheek I've used a little bit of that already like mark making isn't it I wonder if I could get that through there I won't see it I might bring it down to the bottom corner let's go down here and just use some of it up there it's only a single thread so it's going to be quite fine but I can use it to tack down these pieces here Oops. What a great way to use your scraps. Mind you, I think I've used just about all of them. All that's left is this grey and a bit of the black from the eye. There's a bit of brown. Not much, mind you. I've gone quiet thinking I'm having memories flooding into my mind of stitching with my mum and my grandmother over my childhood that's good we've got that secure I might just scoot up there again I've got quite a bit of thread left here we are over the hour, so I do need to get a wriggle on. So we'll just use this blue thread up. So my homework tonight will be just to finish my little bird off with the chocolate stitches. And then tomorrow, Let's explore the same technique with layers of texture to make those flowers come out from the page a little. And I'll be pretty confident there'll be something in my box of fabrics to the side of me here that we use for the bird that should tone in quite well with the whole. Gee, stitching this fabric onto the lace is quite, quite tricky. I don't know if I'm actually achieving too much here, but anyway. Yeah, there's nothing there. <laughs> I'll go through and finish that off, I think. There we go. Okay, guys, I will leave you alone. Now I found a couple more little threads that have got caught up into my work. Let me bring the camera up. Hang on. Let's back it up. So there is a few more threads kicking around. I thought we thought I had a few left. So we've got some more greys. We've got some of the browns. That's great. I'll be able to use those last few down here to finish off that little cluster. So fantastic. All right, guys. I hope Honey Bear likes it. I still haven't found it. She's still out gallivanting. So she's been away all weekend. What can I say? 
that little hussy. Anyway, we won't spread rumours. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow and we will do something with these flowers, I think. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.